You know, I thought I knew what real terror was when earlier this year, McDonald's Japan actually ran out of french fries, forced into rationing those pitifully small portion sizes, truly the unthinkable. And yet, equally as horrifying are some of the stories I've heard over the years from people teaching English in Japan. Now, for many people, teaching English is something of a gateway, a golden ticket into an impenetrable culture. For me, I actually came here as a teacher. My first three years, I was here on the JET programme. And for the most part, it's a time of my life that I look back on very fondly, even if the students seem to have a fascination with my size and scale, uh, going so far as to call me VIP de Big. VIP de Big. To this day, I don't really know what that means. Is it an insult? Is it a term of endearment? Probably the first one. But for me, three years was the perfect number. If I'd carried on, I would have lost my sanity. But what happens if you do carry on? What happens if you do it for 10 long years? You might recall my best American friend, Pete, from our epic road trip to Japan's most northern point in Hokkaido last year. This week, after 10 long years, Pete has finally quit his career as an English teacher with five jobs, each one worse than the last. I don't think I know anyone who's had as ridiculous a career in Japan as Pete has had. Uh, and that is why I want to share it today with you guys in this video. Whether you want to teach English in Japan or not, I think it's a fantastic critique on life in Japan. It might put you off teaching, unfortunately, but for the most part, I think it's fairly entertaining. Uh, and honestly, if you find the absence of McDonald's french fries terrifying, wait until you hear some of the stories in this video. So here he is guys, welcome to the ramen shop, the greatest teacher of English the world has ever seen, Pete Premier what? 2. I'm the greatest? The great, I was being mildly sarcastic. I fear for the future of our children. <laughs> That's uh... <laughs> you're, you're a good teacher though, right? I'm great. Uh, I'm alright. I try hard. If I had children, I would want you to not come near Exactly, them. I think that's, yeah, thanks buddy. But you've had a hell of a career. I know, you haven't told me everything about your career, but you've uh, told no. me snippets. And I, what, yeah. From what I can gather, Peter's had like the most ridiculous teaching career <laughs> I've ever heard from anyone. And in this video, we're gonna sort of talk through that, of the five jobs you've had. Five jobs, 10 years. And three of those jobs were pretty horrendous, from what I understand. Absolute shit. <laughs> Some of the worst jobs anybody could ever ask for. All right, all right. So you came to Japan in 2011, right? That's right. Okay. Right yeah. after the Tohoku earthquake. Mm. That was in March, right? Mm. Yeah, so my application was kind of lost in the earthquake. <laughs> and so uh, we had to wait until we got news. And we, I arrived in April, two weeks after. And uh, just two weeks after the yeah. devastating. So before that though, why did you decide to come to Japan? The, all, the, the question everybody, everybody else wants to know. Yeah, America. why did you come to Japan? Well, I majored in acting in the United States, and you you can imagine like uh, Al Pacino and Robin Williams. If you combined both of those, you, you get like Daniel Day Lewis. I was neither of those. I was the bottom. Um, but I loved acting. It just didn't pay the bills. And I had been to Japan twice to visit um, a host family because we hosted a Japanese student when I was in college. Mm. And I, they lived in Yokohama. I came here, visited them. It was amazing. I absolutely loved it. Visited two more times and I decided, all right, after I graduate college at 26, I am, well, I'm a great teacher though. I can tell them what not to do. All right. uh, I decided I, I want to go and give this a, a three year trial run. Mm, that was mm. my minimum. So the first contract that I got was three months. So a three months, three month contract. contract. It's very hard. Back in 2011, we think of how many opportunities we have now to mm, get jobs. Mm, mm. Back then you had to sign up for a newsletter called like Ohio Sensei, and they would send you an email of the <laughs> the posted job of, uh, like that are available. And very few of those were available to people who were not already in Japan. Right. So the one I, I applied for was a placement company on a three month contract to the beautiful beaches of Joetsu. Oh no, uh, Joetsu. Joetsu. Joetsu is in Niigata. That's in Niigata. And, and the uh, only thing it's famous for, and I went through it on Journey Across Japan, is the biggest nuclear reactor in Japan. What, really? Kashiwazaki reactor, what with Joey? Yeah. But like that, I, I really don't like that part of Japan. It's got some of the highest snowfall on the planet. It, well. it actually has the, the, the record snowfall of Japan happened Jesus. in Niigata, in Joetsu actually. Bloody hell. Um, they didn't really tell you that when you arrived. So I was <laughs> expecting a kind of, you know, Malibu or some sort of like Okinawan, beautiful sea oh, of Japan. Uh, 
It was not. No. So it was very different. I no. took this job in Joetsu. The earthquake got lost in it. I couldn't confirm whether I had it or not, but ultimately I did make my way here. And I came here with all of my earthly possessions, which was my Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles pillow, um, some blankets, <laughs> and uh, a good pillow is very important. And um, that was it. I, I threw away everything else. How much money did you come with? Well, so I brought 2,500. Go. I think I came with about three thousand dollars. That's what you're supposed to do. Um, yeah. It's called planning. Uh, so learn <laughs> from from this. So it must have been a pretty hardcore time to come to Japan. I came in 2012, one year after the earthquake. Mm -hmm. You're coming straight off the tail end, one month after, and yeah. you're literally landing in a nuclear disaster zone, by all accounts. Yeah, there was some concern from my family and friends, but I think that uh, I'm pretty much a disaster zone in general. So they were like, just go and chase your dreams. And I felt like this was very naive. I felt like maybe if I move to Japan, I can be part of like a rebuilding process. Turns out I contributed almost nothing. Except contributed to the destruction. I, yeah, I, it was like, it was basically I paid my taxes, oh, okay. which is the best I could do. Um, so I got there and we had a two day training to kind of get acclimated. Uh, it would be an <laughs> overstatement to say that they were underprepared. They were, oh, really? they were, it was a disaster. Their building was completely disheveled. There oh, were still God. papers all over the floor from the earthquake and they had not a lot of time to recover and get all these contracts sorted. I did not come on a, a work visa. They assured me that this was in the process of being made and uh, I was uh -oh. on my tourist visa. Oh my God. Um, but we had the two day training and uh, apparently there was only really one thing they wanted us to learn and that was, and this is a very obvious thing to any normal intelligent person, don't mess with the kids or be attracted to them. Lesson 101. That's, I, the fact they had to teach that is pretty alarming. It seems like, rumor is, that the previous people who did not finish the year because we had that three month contract, we were replacing them, was because of some uh, inappropriate oh, behavior or it could have been with another teacher or something, I don't know. It but happens. basically it was, be professional. They tasked me with a, a map and a washing machine. We threw it in the back seat of the uh, <laughs> this car they gave me. And they said, all right, you're driving west for about eight hours. So we were supposed to meet at a McDonald's, but I was four or five hours late because I was lost in the mountains of Japan. And so we, they actually were meeting at an apartment right beneath mine. I did find it eventually. And it looked like it was a scene from some sort of a, you know, Guy Ritchie film. There's like a one swinging light bulb. And uh, they have this <laughs> big map of Joetsu, the town we're teaching in. And there's like eight other teachers in there because there's mm. nine of us total. Mm -hmm. And they were showing us on the map, here are your schools. And it right. wasn't just one school. There was uh, one guy had like five schools, another guy had mm. three. And we were trying to figure out where each one was. And I couldn't find my color coded. I was like the pink dot and there was no pink dots. No. So I was like, well, am I even in the right city? Are are these, who are you guys? You're going to the wrong place. Am I even, who are you? What's going on? Um, and we were looking all over this map and I was like, it's not here. And so we, we kind of unfurled the map. Oh no. Off the table and lifted it up. And sure enough, <laughs> over there was my seven schools. <laughs> seven. In the middle of nowhere. 40 minutes up in the mountains. Barely on the map. Five elementary schools and two junior highs. And those were actually very unique because uh, those were very rural, very. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the schools had 31 students total. Jesus Christ. One barely, first barely grader. A, to call that a school was to be liberal. <laughs> well, the 31 student school, it was endearing. Uh, when you got there, <laughs> the, there was like a chicken coop and we could, I could name a chicken. Uh, Is that like, like welcome to you? He's a chicken. Maybe. Yeah, I named him uh, Gregory Peck, and uh, they <laughs> couldn't pronounce that very well. <laughs> Greg was fine. Greg. But I remember the first time I went there, mm. they had uh, like, a, like an auditorium. And these kids were all waiting, and they, they sang the school song and the national anthem. Beautiful. There was this one kind of portly kid. He was like a fourth grader. Right. And he was like holding this rope, and he was like watching me from the minute I came in. And I thought he was maybe a... They're gonna give me a new, I don't know, I was hoping for that. And uh, he was holding the rope. And I'm also, the American man. <laughs> but he was like checking the principal, then checking me, and then checking the principal. And they said like, in Japanese, welcome to the school. Not a lot of English there. And they gave him like the signal, and he, he yanked the rope down. Right. And he was huge. On this, this giant handmade banner unfurled from the, the rafters. Right and it said, welcome, Petter. 
<laughs> it's like, ah, eh, well, that's not my name. I'm Peter. It was P-E-T-T-E-R. Oh, no. In well, traveled 500 like, miles in a car with a washing machine. Just and to, I couldn't even get your name right. And I don't want to be associated with petting or any of that. <laughs> oh, so I was like... It's what got the last team Yeah, I was like, okay. Oh, I was like, no. thank you very much. Uh, every day at that school started with us running around like a, a wheat field for exercise. And most of my lessons there were about agriculture and about... Um, teaching kids oh English God. words like tractor and things. But dodgy banner aside, yes. how was the school? How was the experience of you know being this crazy little mm. mountain community for three, three, months? three months? Three months. I will say this, of all the experiences I've had in the past 10 years, that first three months was the most memorable mm. and exceptional, good and bad, uh, time in Japan I've ever had in my entire life. A lot of the things that I taught, I never expected. I was teaching kids uh, how to plant, well they taught me how to plant rice, I should say. That I, sounds like a parody of, uh, like, uh, what was, will you be doing in Japan? Planting the rice. Is planting rice or... Did you teach them anything of value? Did you teach them about Kansas? Uh, I, but it, it's more about being an ambassador. A lot of your job ends up being, mm. unless you become more experienced, is sharing American culture. And to be honest, they did not have an opportunity to meet foreigners very often. Sure, and, and that's what teaching, a lot of the teaching in Japan is about. Certainly on the JET program, Certainly. they're like, you're an ambassador for the UK. It's more just introducing people to the world outside Japan. The, the kids themselves were very eager to, to learn. And when you, you got to understand, when you go into the classroom, you have an advantage that none of the Japanese teachers have. You're unique, you are interesting, and you From can- From Kansas. Well, not me. I meant other, like you, if you well, want to Well, because, I mean, most, most Japanese uh, English teachers haven't even left Japan. I don't mean that Japanese teachers are not interesting, but I mean that your classes are something unique in the school. Sure. So the kids look forward to your lessons. In the end of the day, I, I got a lot of, when I left, they were very kind and they, they wrote me little notes and... Oh, so you're there three months. Presumably, you, you enjoy Japan, you wanted to stay. How did, did you stay on past those three months? Did they, why didn't they keep you? Well, they jets came in. They had oh. the, the, the official clean. Brought in the yeah. big guns. Brought in the big guns. The, the so, jet teachers. And I was like, oh, well, here we go. We got to so replace Petter. Yeah, goodbye, Petter. So the remember the guy I told you about the swinging light who was helping our agent? Yeah, when you first arrived. When I first yeah. arrived, he ended up wanting, he was kind of impressed with uh, some of my abilities uh, as a snake oil salesman. And he, he offered me a job where oh. we would be working inside of a mall, at Ito Yokado, which is kind of like a, a big chain of malls here. Still in Joetsu. Still in Joetsu. And uh, I would be fronting, and the only international teacher at this, this school that we're inventing from scratch. Uh, my advice is, first, don't ever do that. This was a bad <laughs> idea. This was a terrible idea. Don't, <laughs> don't count follow on a, me. Don't follow a shady man into a shopping mall. Don't follow a shady man into a shopping mall. And um, I said, I'll do it as long as I don't have to make the curriculum. I don't feel comfortable. So but, uh, you've left your rural mountain life behind. You've planted the rice and now you're, you're off to the city. Of you're Joetsu. off to the city of Joetsu. Not a very good city. Well, I no, liked it a lot. It's but, not that good. And uh, the snow hit and uh, they warned us, you know, the snow, like you said, is very, very heavy in there. And they said, uh, this, this neighbor of mine said, you, you need to be careful when every couple hours you should open your door and clean out the snow. And I was like, no, every couple of hours you should be no good. <laughs> And I was like, I'm from Kansas, man. We've had ice storms. Uh, he was right. Because um, there was like, my bicycle was outside. I took a picture of it. And there's like a little bit of snow on the tires. The next morning, I couldn't even open my door to get out. You couldn't I, open your door. It was snowed in. I had to go through the window, go around, and oh clean the front God. of the door. And the picture of the bike, it's like up to the seat nearly. Jesus. And that was like in six hours of snowfall. That's, that is terrifying. So I had to walk to the <laughs> Ito Yokado every day. It was uh, normally like a 15 minute walk, but in Snowland it's 35 minutes. This is pretty wild though. You, you're in Japan, you've had your three month experience. Now you're fronting a dodgy yeah. English language. What even is this? This isn't a school. Is it like an Ikaiwa, an English it's conversation an, yeah, class? And uh, we had a very strange system where you bought points and you could exchange your points oh for lessons God. with me. Long story short, the guy was uh, Legitimately insane. He had several <laughs> domestic issues with his wife, oh God. child. He uh, would go on sh shouting tirades. And worst of all, we, we got a lot of money up front by promising these point systems. You know, like people would buy a thousand dollars worth of points. Right. I'll use these throughout the next year. 
He lost it all on Pachinko. Yeah, and that was also, he did pay me, sometimes late, but that was a huge issue. Is like, I could not see that this was going to be a long term. So your boss was a man with a gambling addiction and a question of understanding of English. Did he speak English? English? Yeah, his English was pretty good. He had lived in California for a while. Okay. And I, yeah, and so he, he, he seemed pretty knowledgeable, but um, and certainly he was a, a shady businessman, so it takes some degree of banter to right. convince people. But like... Much like your channel. Uh, <laughs> Shut up. Your pods. <laughs> so, no, no, I, it, was, it, was, it was really rough. And working inside of that Ekaiwa was a lot of broken promises. I told you I, I didn't want to make the curriculum. So luckily, they, he had tasked his brother to write, who, who seemed very like energetic, I want to write it. The brother of the gambling man. Yes. And uh, I was like, all right, man, let's see what you got. And I was like, all right, so one of the lessons we're going to do is like, you're at an airport. Right. And I'm going to help you like check in your bags or stuff that you may actually use using English. Sure. Can you write me an AB dialogue? Mm -hmm. He was like, oh, okay. And he would like type away giggling for hours and he'd print off these sheets. It'd be like, hello. Hi. I'd like to take a flight, please. Okay, where are you going? Do you have a banana? I'm hungry. And you're like, what? What does this mean right here? Is this a mistake? And he was like, keep reading. Oh, He's like, no bananas on the flight, sir. Really? Time to die, or something like he would, and I'd be like, "Well, what is that?" You point out, like, pull out a gun. He's like, "It's funny. These are emotional. These are interesting." Oh and I said, uh, "No, no, no. This is wrong." Or we'd go to the grocery store, and he'd be like, uh, "How can I help you?" He's like, "I have a shoe on my head," and you're like, "What?" Why was he writing this shit? This is like, so this is a script for you to practice for people coming in. This was supposed to be actual lessons. Teach them real life, everyday English. And he really, really was in on being like a comedian. What a twat. But yeah. so like, you know, that, I knew that this was not gonna last. And he said, okay, it's time to recontract. So I guess it actually may have been a little over a year. I think I stayed there for 12 months. Or I can't quite- Was there like a voice in your head like, I need to get out of here. I need to stop doing this. Well, the, the big concern was when you looked at the coffers and there was a lot of, this is very, this is a very specific situation, but me and the other coworkers there, we were like, this is really bad. We've lost all of our money. He's gambled it all. You haven't been paid in six months. I'm still getting paid, but none of this is working. None of this is good. good so I was like, all right, uh, I, I need to, uh, that's it. So we, yeah. yeah, so we, I, I left them behind. Uh, I decided to come to Tokyo on a bus. I heard that there was an opportunity. How did you quit? I told the guy, I said, look, I really appreciate what you've done for me. Please don't kill me. But I'm going to transition into something. I want to move to the big city. This has been a good experience. Man, did he get mad at me though. Really? Oh man. Well, didn't you, why wouldn't you like, what about all the money you fucked away on Pachinko? I, you know, I'm not a very confrontational person. Um, I didn't know how to handle that. And plus, he had the, he had the, the big thing was he had been really slow about renewing my visa. Right. And so with that running out, that was my big concern. Uh. And I was like, have you done this yet? And to do that, he had to probably show them some of the company details, uh. which... <laughs> the company wouldn't have lasted very long. What did he say when you left this, this incredible organization? Uh, I believe he had a lot of choice words that uh, I was uh, one of the biggest frauds in English teaching history. <laughs> you were Correct. The fraud. I mean, but I oh think he, there God. was some validity. This is so awful. How did you find an opportunity in Tokyo? I think, uh, you know, the secretary of that, that, that Aikaiwa, she had found me an opportunity by searching because she wanted me to get out. She was just like looking out for me. She helped me get out. I took a, a bus, stayed with a friend, mm. and I must have looked desperate. Bags <laughs> under my eyes, disheveled. Uh, not so different than now, I suppose. Was but, it like your first time in Tokyo properly? Um, well, other than visits, yeah. I'd never, I'd never, we didn't even spend any time there. Mm. That was my first trip there, yeah. So there you are in the big city. There I am in the, the big city. The secretary yeah. of the worst company in the world has helped you out. <laughs> what happens next? I go to this place and I'm, I was, it seemed perfect. It was a, it was a, it was an Eikaiwa, an English conversation school that was predicated on English through drama. Oh. That's perfect. Drama so, teacher. Drama teacher. And I was like, okay, I can do this. And they said, all the lessons are already pre-made. Here are all of our materials. We want you to teach uh, these age ranges from, mm. from literally zero to to adult. I said, uh, please, I I really need this job. And this guy, David, British guy. Must he, be uh, good, must be good. Well, he looked me right in the face, and he, right in the eyes, and he said, welcome home. 
Wow. Oh, great going. Worst job you ever had. This is the worst job you've ever had. Worst job ever had. By far, hands down, 10 out of 10. It's impossible. Absolutely. No, no. I will plant rice. Well, I will put shoes on heads. Welcome I home. Will. But uh, it was the worst job I've ever had. And there's really like two or three examples of why. Uh, one of my classes was called Joyland. It was a four hour class on Tuesdays and Thursdays. The kids were two years old, very cute. The kids are adorable. We had one assistant and entertained for four hours. God. This is insanity. It's extremely hard to do this. And uh, you have to learn all these things where you, uh, can, I, can I show you the Yum Yum song? Uh, I will, just briefly. You gotta make your O's like this. And you go, oh. Yum, 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 yum. I'm very shoot me in my face. Let's eat. It was terrible. It was that kind of material, right? Glad your drama degree was put to good use. Yeah, right. I was teaching them your breath. And one particular class, this woman came in still visibly pregnant. Right. Like nine months pregnant and maybe eight. And she was like, I want to take the class with you. And I was like, me? And I was like, okay, well, when you're, we, we recommend about six months after the child's born, you know, then mm. there could be some, you have some time to develop with the child. Sure. And she was like, no, I want to take it now. And I was like, well, the baby is not born yet. She was like, it's fine. I want you to do it. And uh, we did this whole lesson several times. And she would sit there with the baby and her tummy oh, and God. she would, uh, I would teach it colors. I would, oh. And everything was like through gestures. So I'd say like, red. <laughs> and then she would say like, are you ready? Red, and then she'd feel it, and she was like, <gasps> and I'd be like, uh, <laughs> green, and she'd be like, green, and she'd be like, you know, <laughs> and I remember after like blue or what something. What the fuck is turquoise? I don't know, and she was like blue, blue, and she was like, <gasps> I think he said it, and I was like, I, I don't think that's possible. I think if I would have killed myself at this point, this I is fucking money. insane. Was, so yeah, I was teaching. You were teaching a fetus yes. colors. Oh, this is the level it's got to. Oh my god. And there was there was one particular... Bring back the shoes on the head. No, Bring back the no, banana no. plane. It gets worse. Um, there was one particular class I'll, I'll never forget. <laughs> I might need a, a visual demonstration if you would... I, I think, uh, can I grab this thing over here? Is that alright? Yep. I'm gonna grab this... Oh god. I'm a bit worried by this prop. It's a little, little koopy baby. Right. This is the mayonnaise. The mayonnaise mascot. Baby. Yeah. I don't know what you <laughs> mayonnaise have. Mayonnaise baby. It's the mayonnaise baby. And uh, this was not the one we used at the studio. I had a different doll. This is the baby you taught colors. <laughs> <laughs> we had to teach this class, Oyako. And this is a different different parent. Usually, 99% of the time, it was a mother and the child who'd come in right, right, right. Um, during the day. Uh, this one particular time, it was uh, the dad, and I'd never seen him in the class before, and mm. he was visibly nervous. And he didn't speak English particularly well, which is okay, because it's to learn, it's for both. And um, one of the particular things we were doing is this, is this activity called Wiggy Waggy. And it's, it's important. It's, uh, these are educational things. Wiggy Waggy. Well, it's Wiggy Waggy, Wiggy Waggy Jelly in the Bowl. And the idea is, is you have the kid who's maybe one or nine months or something like that. And, you know, I have my little demonstration thing and I'd say like, yeah, Wiggy Waggy, Wiggy Waggy, Jelly in the Bowl. And the, the, the dad should, he, he was like, what is this teaching the children? You know, it's a warm-up activity, so we're getting them kind of mobile, we're getting them kind of ganky, because when they're, they're kind of scared when they come in. It's kind of scared it. seeing you like throw yeah, the yeah, baby it, around. But, you know, so the dad was like, Wiggy Waggy, Wiggy Waggy, Jelly in the Bowl. And I was like, nah, you're not buying in, buddy. You gotta buddy. do it properly. You gotta do it properly. So I was like, listen, I, I was like, look, we're just trying to make the kid feel comfortable, so we need to do this together. Yep. And he was like, oh, not a huddle. Okay, I'll do it. And I was like, all right, let's let's make it a bit a little bigger. Sure. So I took the little thing and I, you know, uh, wiggy waggy, wiggy waggy, jelly in the bowl. That's what we do. That's what. And he was like, okay. So he has his kid, and he said to his credit, wiggy waggy, wiggy waggy, jelly in the. And then the kid shit on his face. <laughs> <laughs> like, like no. directly, yeah, like just straight, <laughs> straight from above. I never forget it. He had, I'm not, and this is not for all viewers, but he had poop dripping from his nose. I'll never forget it. <laughs> I was still holding the baby thing, looking like, oh my god, and the fumes oh. started to hit. And I remember looking up, and I saw his thing, and his eyes were like just huge, like shocked. And I remember the kid was like giggling, like. <laughs> Like, <laughs> well, the baby clearly knew baby, what it did. Baby needed to go, so <laughs> what maybe did the he wiggy waggies. He, he actually did not say anything. He t 
touched his face, saw the poop, put his kid down, and I said, uh, let's clean, and we, we kind of spent the, the class cleaning up. <laughs> I remember looking at him, I was like, we still have 30 minutes left. <laughs> he was like, ah, I'm leaving. I was like, okay. And I was like, I hope you had a good lesson. There are no refunds. Thank you for coming here. Have a night. All right, bye. And oh my uh, gosh. believe it or not, they never came back. I wonder why. Mm. But these are just funny stories. Let me give you some actual information about what these kind of jobs entail. They're really tough. A lot of those A Kiowa classes make you work throughout the year. They're very brutal schedules. Mm. I just want everyone to know that. Mm. You end up working six days a week, a lot. You end Jesus. up spending a lot of your time there and the energy to teach children of that age uh, for those 50 minutes over and over, it's really hard. And those kids do get to know you and they are really cute mm. and they're, they're adorable. Um, and they do learn a lot and like we did per well, plays. Well, all the colors. We learned, well, no, no. We would actually do like full plays. One in particular, I remember, uh, <laughs> we did like this three little pigs with the big bad wolf, you know, and I was the wolf and these okay. kids, uh, we had like nine pigs though. And um, I made a mistake. I had a nomikai, which is a drinking night the night before I had a birthday party. Right. Like, I didn't remember we had the performance that day. I thought it was a week later. I show up to the studio drunk as a skunk. It was awful. And I'm ready to do my part as the big bad wolf. And oh my God, this was such a small room, very tiny. Right. And all these parents have like their iPads and they're recording and I just look miserable. <laughs> And I remember this one kid was so excited in his little pig costume. He ran up to me and hugged me. And then he went, oh, and he said in Japanese, oh, you smell like dad. And then the, I remember dad, dad was recording. He was like, what? Oh, no. And I was like, oh, let's get started, kids. I'll huff and puff. Okay, here we go. Little pigs, little pigs. Yeah, it was, it was a nightmare. But like, you know. You smell like that. You smell like that. I'll never forget that. What the hell uh, did you drunk the night before? <laughs> oh no! But, you know, it's it sounds like the only way to get through this utter shit show. Of a yeah, job the was performance was still drunk. good. It was still a good performance. But um, so the the thing was, uh, after a year, I felt like okay, the Akiwa business is no longer for me. It was the unhealthiest no, I've ever been. <laughs> I was gaining weight. I was miserable, and it was just the hours were was terrible. Was this like the low point of your? It like was. Time in Japan? I would say it was the absolute lowest I've ever felt in my entire life. Jesus. And that's sad because I was living in a cool place and I had not... And you're in Yokohama, right? Yeah, it's pretty great, beautiful. Pretty cool place to live, yeah. And I had good friends and I... It was just that job was really tough, so be ready to before you sign your soul over to these companies. You have to make sure... Yes, Japan's amazing. Yes, it has cool stuff, but it is a lot of work. And uh, I've never been more broke in my entire life. I. Mm. In particular, there was one of those summer months where I couldn't make it as it turned into October and you have literally no money, sure. literally none. Uh, you go on things like egg diets or rice diets where you... Egg diet? Yeah, you're a chicken man, I understand that. I have to go before it's cooked. You gotta go like... <laughs> <laughs> it's just scrambled eggs and rice because that's the cheapest stuff. I mean, stuff. that'll be good for a few days, but... I did it for uh, six weeks. Oh my it God. Was, I think it's what gave me cholesterol problems. <laughs> um, and there was one particularly low moment where I could not even afford toilet paper. I had to go to the local park and steal a oh roll. My it was, it's dire, it's, it's absolutely dire. So an opportunity came up where I was looking for more money, more stability, something long-term. Mm. And I got hired at a private high school in, in Tokyo. Mm. And uh, the pay is significantly better. I applied for the job and you know, it's actually interesting. I, I went to the, the screening process because they did not have like, you can't just go in. They hired a company to screen out the bad employees. <laughs> I tricked them. <laughs> so I go in there and the guy was like, I wrote on my resume, I worked in Joetsu for a year and I've been a high school teacher for three. And there was just a year that was blank, wiggy waggy year. I just left that out. Wiggy waggy year. Yeah, I was like, I don't want to mention that. <laughs> and the guy was like, yeah, well, did you, what, did you, were you unemployed for a year in Japan? I was like, nah, it's just, you know, uh, bad oh, shit. Oh, God. And he was like, well, I kind of would like to know, what'd you do? And I was like, well, I worked at this real shit place called ALG or whatever. And he was like, oh, yeah, I wrote all their materials. And I was oh. like, oh, damn it. Oh, and I was like, wait, I don't mean you were materials were bad. He was like, listen, if you survived a year doing that, I think I can trust you to pass you on. This interview's done. So we just ended up talking. Wow. So I was very lucky. I ended up taking the job, significantly better pay, 
And a really interesting stroke of luck is that I got to teach the senior class for the last five years of actors and idols and musicians. So and real, actual actors and idols. You teach some pretty famous people, right? I do, and it, it's been a very satisfying experience because I get to teach them uh, kind of Western acting styles mm. or, or really more performative English than the testing English. So sure. that was that was awesome. So, so a happy ending. Yeah, and then I quit all of that this year. <laughs> so I'm done. I'm done teaching. And I, you quit. So after five years doing this. Yep, job, I've done that for five years. Why did you quit though? It's such a good job. Well, you know, uh, I see what you do. You make it look so easy. You're such a big tough guy. But, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. To be honest, I've always you've been a, a huge inspirational source in this regard. Japan is a place where I genuinely believe whether you're teaching or you're making content or you're doing trades or whatever. It's what you want to make of it, right? Mm. There's a lot of opportunity here for you oh, to be self-employed. Yeah. And you encouraged me along the way to, why don't I go back to my more performance roots? And I, I, I started a ill-fated and stupidly named Twitch channel that you've, you've never been a fan of the name. But that has allowed me to transition into something I feel far more proud of. So you're giving up job security at a private school with the prestigious students to be a Twitch streamer. Now that you word it like that, I feel like I've made a terrible error. Uh, the last thing I'll say is the expectation versus reality. It will give you an opportunity to be in this country and maybe find something that you want to do. Mm. But take the job seriously. You oh, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot of people don't. A lot of people well, come here on the lark. I, I take it seriously. Certainly. I did. Um, you had some bad teaching materials. You should check out his video. Oh, I did have some bad teaching materials. And actually, I had the same situation as you did. I mocked. Uh, a textbook, and it turned. And I, I remember t talking to one of my uh, uh, Japanese colleagues, who was an English teacher, and he was like, "Oh, my friend wrote that book," and I was like, "Oh God!" Yeah. I, I sagged <laughs> off the book because the English was wrong in the book. Was that the like a magic? Yes, there you like go. a magic so, comes from a Japanese textbook. I remember that. But well done, Pete. If you have any questions for Pete, write in the comments, guys. Let us know. I'm sure he'll be happy to answer away. Ooh, you more work. <laughs> But uh, do go and check out Pete on Premiere 2 Twitch. That's the one. And uh, you can help a poor man today. Well, it's it's one of the best Twitch channels I follow. I think it's one of the only ones you follow. I do follow like three channels. There you, you go. Are, so you know, I you're, appreciate you're it. Number three. In the, top three. In the top three, yeah. Yeah, um, and uh, I can't say thanks enough for letting me come here to the studio again. Not at all. But thank you, Pete. For more Pete, check out Premiere 2. Check out our trip to Hokkaido and check out Pete when he came to the studio with Natsuki and Connor and got a tour. It's good fun. Speaking of our trip to Hokkaido, I've got this great plan where we're gonna travel Bye to everyone. the easternmost point of Japan. It's gonna be great. I